much love and peace to go around. So much love for the whole world on a beautiful day. You're watching Hello Nigeria. You're watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. And I'm so excited about the next conversation we're having because anyone who loves me or who knows me knows how much I love cake. Today we're joined by the creative director of the Cake Ponds. His name is Dakbo Balogo. And he was talking to us about the business of cake making in Nigeria and how he got into it. It's a delight to have you. Thank you for having me. First of all, I, I think that your cakes are very unique. Like Thank the designs you, you make, you, you go out of the norm, you know, and you see you make extraordinary things. What inspires your designs? Is it customers' requests? Is it you and your team just sitting down together and brainstorming and thinking, let's try out something out of the ordinary? Yeah, Nigerian customers are quite unique. They don't, they don't really give you the chance, the opportunity to be creative on their cakes. They already know what, most of them actually already know what they want. So most of them give you the designs they want you to recreate for them, probably jobs other people had done or something they had seen online. Just very few people give you the opportunity to be creative on cakes. All right. So now these are, are some of your works. You know, we just saw an engagement cake. Yeah, and the wedding cake. These are some of the designs that you've okay. done. Okay. On the average, how long would you say that your longest design has taken you? Uh, that would be like a week. What? A week, yeah. And that happens when you have to do sugar crafted. Yeah, part of the cake, yeah. Okay, speaking about sugar crafting, I know you did a course recently yes. where you crafted sugar, you did oh, your myself. face. Were yes. you the one that crafted that? Yeah, it was actually my teacher. Mine was behind it. It was not as good as that. <laughs> Those guys are really talented there in Turkey. And then uh, most people from Nigeria always travel there or any other place to learn, brush up on what you know about cake making. Because the competition is really crazy the, down here in Lagos. Exactly. I was going to say that. How how did you have the guts to go into... Yeah, that's that's the sugar crafting of okay, you. Okay. How did you have the guts to go into the cake making business? Because it just seems like there's some businesses that seem oversaturated. But then again, the Nigeria market is constantly on the increase. Cake making is one of them. You know, how, what gave you the balls to say, I want to do cake making? At the time that you went into, was it like a thing like it is now? Yeah, I think... I, I, I tell people, a lot of people tell me from time to time that they, I have so much passion for cake, but I believe the love of money <laughs> <laughs> drove me into cake, trust me, because um, the passion is there, no doubt, yeah. But um, doing business in Lagos is hard. On my streets alone, I think we have about four cake makers on my streets where my office is, but all four of us are not even enough to service Lagos mainland local government, if we look at it. I've been there for like three years, I think. I've only had like eight people walk into my store to buy cakes. Most of my customers are online. Yeah, so it's, it's just very easy for everybody to just come in today and say they want to make cakes and everybody will actually make it. The market is just too big. So no need for us to feel like, oh, this person is entering into my market. Yeah, but of, of course you have to have something special to sell, yes. Uh, cakes, some people make cakes and don't even touch fondant. We have companies like that. They just do cream. Some do fondant and don't do crafts. Yeah, so for you to stand out in the industry, you have to offer something extremely special. It's very important. How did you get into the cake making industry? Ah, it's a very funny story. <laughs> this was back in 2006 when I had a couple of friends, like three of them. They stayed vertically opposite my sister's house then, and then I never liked them because I didn't like the idea of guys making cakes. I thought it was a woman thing, like, well, guys be making cakes. And then if I had to be friends with them, it was obvious that... There was no way I was not going to touch cake or sugar. And they were working for Cakes by Toast and then, and I followed them one day, and I saw how they had so much passion for it. And then I heard, I heard something about money, and it clicked. <laughs> but initially, as at that time, I never used to do cakes. All I did was to get others, claim, like, I'm the baker, 
gave it to my so guys to do. Man. I was just a middleman claiming to be the cake maker then for about two years. I did that for a long time because the money just kept calling me and stuff. <laughs> but along the line, I had to eventually put my hands in it. It was always, cake had always been my fallback plan growing up. But uh, at some point, I decided to push it out as my major source of income. And it's been great. It, it obviously looks like it's been <laughs> great. What would you say have been some of the key lessons that you've picked up along the way? Ah, uh, you can just never stop learning in cake. You have to always find a way to learn new things, upgrade the skills you have because the market is extremely competitive. If you feel you are the only one good at, good at doing something, you will see someone pop up in Abuja or even here in Lagos or even on your streets and will probably do better than you. So you always have to be on your toes to get new designs and bring out something quality for everybody to see. Now, at the start of the show, we talked about Anthony Joshua and his <laughs> supposed loss, which I think is just a part of his journey. Okay. Have you had that nerve-wracking or that, that moment where you just thought, you know, I'm done with this cake business? Have you ever had such a huge challenge that you were discouraged to continue what you do? Many times. I don't even think I, I, I needed to wait to have a challenge. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I just get tired of cake making because you do the same thing over and again. My social life is gone. It's, sometimes you have to miss church on Sundays because you have to be at work just to make, to break even and stuff. But if you really think about it, there's nothing better than doing cakes for me. For now, there's nothing better than doing cake. So I think about it in the morning and when I'm in the shower, when I have water all over my body, I'm back and I'm off to work to work. You talked about the time when you were younger and you had these friends. There was, there was this stereotype about cake being a feminine business. Yes. Do those stereotypes still exist now? And I, if yes? I don't, I don't really think so. Though the industry is majorly women. They control the industry. You cannot win that. But behind every women making cakes, there are usually guys on the ground doing one or two. But the industry is majorly controlled by women. It's not about sex or anything. I think it has to do about what you have to offer to, to the public. I popped up professionally a couple of years ago, and I'm aware I am not because of uh, what I think I can do, but because people like what I'm offering to the public, my craft and everything. All right, so you do some really challenging designs. We have some of your, the designs of your cake that have been scrolling on, okay. you know, our TV screens. You've done the engagement ring, you've done the talking drum, you do cartoon characters. And I'm wondering, has there ever be, been a point when a client gave you a brief to do one of these magnificent cakes, or you decided you wanted to explore, and then you realized that you absolutely messed it up? Yeah, most of the times, the, the best cakes I've made are cakes that I was given the free and to do whatever I like. Most times when, when I recreate other people's designs, there's nothing so much coming out of me on the cake. But my best designs are actually the ones I have given the free hand, like the one I did for Lagos State House of Assembly. Oh yes, we just saw the, the House of yes. the Assembly Yes, they just gave me a budget and told me to just give them something nice for their H Assembly celebration. And it's very easy to and come up with how did that make something. you feel? Yeah, it felt great. I, I actually got the connect working on the Honorable Desmond Elliott just for a short while and then it was, it was just... Uh, it's it like, I need to go then. and call on Eribu this morning <laughs> so that me too, I can get one. Yeah, that's the cake we're talking yes, about. Yes, On the average, yes, how long yes. did it take you to make this design? This, because it was ordered less than 24 hours, it took 24 hours to do. 24 hours? Yes. On the average, though, normally, what's the process? You know, I know there are people that say you, yeah, you have to book for eight hours before. Yeah, mine, I, because we don't actually make um, readily made cakes, we, made, we make only pre-ordered cakes. So we actually advise that you book your cake a week before you need it. So but for a cake like the Lagos State House of Assembly, like you see, if, if there was time, I would have preferred it being like a week before they yeah, need probably it. probably added more. But most times when they call, it's usually like 24 hours or 18 hours or 19 hours before. So I'm used to calling one or two other people to help all our staff and just get it done. Have you ever had to deal with extremely difficult clients? Definitely. How do you handle it? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you, you just think about busting up. But you think, the thing is, you will deal more with women in the cake industry. If we were to depend on men to buy cakes, you'll probably get four people a year. Hey. <laughs> you'll probably men. get four. Ninety-six percent of my customers are women. In fact, the, the men will actually buy cakes just once in three months. Yeah. As, I, as we're saying this thing, the people in the control room are actually laughing <laughs> because as we're speaking, I brought them cake this evening and they would never buy me cake on my birthday. So uh, you just have to find a way to... Because if you... Women 
can post up easily. So you just have to have a very good team handling social media and the front desk. So when issues arise, they are able to be calm and reply to the customer very politely, even when the customer is being rude. Let's talk about how social media has helped the cake making business in Nigeria. We know that a lot of people do their online purchases on social media. What would you say has worked for you? Now, this is for a budding cake entrepreneur that just wants to snap their photos and put their, you know, you have really lovely photos. Yeah. How do you go about packaging your Instagram for business? Now, I mean, you mentioned that a lot of your clients are from social media. Yes, they are. Most of them. I, I think the, the, the most, the biggest app that has helped the business is still Instagram. Nothing, nothing comes close because it's the only platform where you are able to share pictures continuously without, without someone getting upset of you sharing pictures multiple times. And then the fact that you can even convert a page to a business page and you can, you can use ads and stuff. Oh, that. <laughs> I love this case. <laughs> you, can, you can pay for ads and stuff to get more people to reach, you, to reach your business. Makes it very, very easy for everybody to succeed on social media. So it's just most about of the businesses, snapping, like taking really yeah, clear mo all pictures. All my pictures are actually from my, my phone. Oh, from your phone? I do not all of them? It. All of them are from my phone. So even these pictures, they're from your phone? All of them are from my phone. Wow. All Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, on a much lighter note, <laughs> you're, are you married? I'm engaged. So when you're getting married, who's baking your wedding cake? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because the thing is, you always know. ask people that do makeup, or people who are professional MCs, like who is going to do your wedding know. I know it's not going to be me. If the wedding is in Lagos, it's not going to be me. It will be someone else, maybe a friend that also bakes, but it won't be me, but I just don't know. One of your team. Are you sure you won't just tell your team? No, I don't think I will. You won't use it as ad. I, I don't I'll think I will. I'll be like, ah, nah. thank you for... You know, people's wedding page used to trend. Yeah, they though. like to do extra. I, I, I'm someone that will probably not even mind an eight-inch cake for my wedding cake. Would you be able to... So you don't have OCD. You're not a control freak. <laughs> no, when it really. comes to trusting people to be able to deliver. Not really. I, I think I could tell that because I noticed that you leave a lot of the designs to some of your staff to do sometimes. Yes, sometimes. And you're always posting on yeah, your page. Saying, that's oh, the I'm only way they team. can even improve on what they can do. I, I was used to making sure that for every cake that goes out, I did something on it. So it was affecting them because they were not growing. So I had to give them that space for them to be able to... Great signs of a leader. Uh -huh. Now, they say that your business is not able to stand on its own, that you've not really completed your job as a leader. You should be able to leave, create such a structure that even whilst you're not there, your business can thrive. We hope that we've been able to share with you some gems for those of you who are looking to go into the business of cake making in Nigeria. But thank you for joining us. Thank Catherine you for having Malogo. me here. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing that your eight-inch cake. I'm sure your bride, will have, <laughs> your bride will never agree. All right, today in history, the third of June, Max World Bicycle Day. That's like my favorite sporting ever. According to the World Health Organization, safe infrastructure for walking and cycling is also a pathway for achieving greater health equity. For the poorest urban sector who often cannot afford private vehicles, walking and cycling can, can provide a form of transport whilst reducing the risk of heart disease, stroke, cancers, and even death. And accordingly, improved active transport is not only healthy, it is also equitable and cost-effective. Can you ride a bicycle? Yes, I can. And not everybody can. It's a very important <laughs> question to ask. I like riding <laughs> bicycles. If I had to exercise every day, which I don't do now, it would be riding bicycles. Thank you so much, Jack Bob Logan, for joining us. Thank you very How can much. people follow you on Instagram? Yeah, the handle is the Cake Puns, Twitter, Facebook. Why did you choose that name, though? Cake Puns. P -A -W -N -S. I, I had a name. I was using a name like uh, 2008, King's Cakes. And I was just there. I didn't have any business sense. I didn't know I needed to register it. Only for me to want to register it around 2010. And then I found out someone was using the name even before, while I was in secondary school. <laughs> so I had to think of something, something new, something close to what I like to do. And it was very difficult because you send a name to CAC and they reject it. Send, I kept sending names and stuff until I, just, I was seeing a TV show on DSTV and something came to mind about the pawn shop where you take um, uh, to equipment that you own and trade it for money. And then I just came up with the cake ponds. So. Fantastic. The moral of the story, before you start any business, please check with CAC. It is very easy to do these days. And with the ease of business that has been introduced, you can easily check and register your business name so that you don't find out years later that somebody has already <laughs> been using that business name even <laughs> while you were in secondary school. We've been joined by that <laughs> Balogo, spoken extensively about the art of cake making in Nigeria, as well as the drama that goes on on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway with the organization that is calling out the government asking them to fix it within the next 100 days. My name is always Wilberman Olive Emodia.
We remain all event. I'm actually swearing for myself. <laughs> well, conversation for another day. But this is where we draw the cutting on today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a fabulous night. See you tomorrow. Peace out. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.